with that. So let's move into the next one, right? It's just talking about the fact that, so we've talked about the need to have a plan and execution, right? Not uh, the way God has shown us an example. Um, what we typically kind of shoot for, right? When we're talking about, about plan is that we need to do that plan well, right? We will use the word having a, a perfect plan will give you a perfect execution. But we all know that perfection is an illusion. Perfection is not possible, right? Because we're only going to be as perfect as the day we die. But for as long as we are alive, everything we do can always be better, right? For us as Christians, uh, well, there's always going to be a gap between us and Christ. The Bible says is when we see him, then we'll be like him, right? That's when our growth will end. But until then, there'll be a, a gap that will keep on pressing, right? And so when we use the word perfect execution or perfect plan, we're talking about something we're pressing towards, right? Like uh, Vince Lombardi would say, when we press towards perfection, we will get excellence or what we might call great, right? So even though I'm using the word perfect plan, what I'm really talking about is as we shoot for perfection, we will get excellent plan, great plan, great execution, great um great, uh, excellent execution, right? So when we talk about perfection, all we're talking about is getting all your dogs in a row. I'm not saying all the dogs. You can never get all the dogs in a row, right? You get all the dogs that you know because you're limited in knowledge, right? You do your due diligence, obviously. You do all that you can do. Do your best. But your best will never be 100% because you're not perfect. But do your best. That's what we're saying. We're using the word perfect here. Do your best to get all the dogs in a row, do your best to cross all the T's and all the I's. Do your best, you right, to put your best foot forward, right? Don't just do a plan. Hey, this is how we should do a plan. So <laughs> you just do, hey, I've, I've done a plan. <laughs> you'd be bound for failure, right? Your, your, your success is as good as the input you put into it, right? If you want a good success, then you have to do a good input, a good planning, right? So it's, 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 being focused around it, being disciplined around it, and being diligent about that which you're putting into execution, right? That will make a difference for you. All right. So here is, uh, we're talking about, like we said, you know, one of the things that 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 results in failure is is when you get stuck, you know, also trying to get the best plan, right? That means you're trying to oh, oh. and it's for those of us that grew up as perfectionists. You know, I'm a recovering perfectionist, right? Uh, you know, I grew up as a perfectionist, you know, and I've lost a lot of money because of being a perfectionist. In the stock market, I used to do a lot of trading on paper, you know, <laughs> because I, I love data. I'm an engineer, right? But I lost a lot of money because no matter how good I am on paper, I'm not getting the true effect of the market, right? So there is good to plan. You need to do the best plan that you can. But you never forget that the reason why we plan is to execute, not for the planning sake. We don't plan for the sake of planning. We plan for the sake of execution. Execution is king. We plan not for the sake of planning. We plan for the sake of executing. So once I've done my best in, a, in planning, it's time to execute. I should not die in planning, right? We call it analysis paralysis. You need to execute. You will never know until you execute. You'll never know until you hit the field, right? Your, your best of plan will never fully represent reality. You only know reality when you go to execute, right? It's good to always good to have a plan, but know that the best of your plan will never, never is the word, uh, 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 will never mirror reality. So when you get to reality, you have to be willing and ready to make adjustments to your plan to meet, to, to meet with the real thing you are seeing in the market, right? That, and because of this, some people don't plan because it's, oh, we never know what will happen. Oh, why should I start planning? Eh, we don't know what will happen January 1. Uh, I mean, that's foolishness, right? It's always good to plan because when you plan, it's easy to, to modify and make better a plan that you have than when you eat reality and you have no plan. You're going to overcall a, um, we'll call it, uh, what, what's the word now? 
Oh, there's a word for it, but I'm going to describe it. You, you just get into uh you just get into a place, a track that you just you're lost in it. You start justifying stupidity if you don't have a plan, right? That's why people die when you have an accident. People die more from fear than the actual accident itself because they don't have a plan. If you have a plan, you follow your plan in, in a day of crisis. In a day of crisis, you don't have a plan. You're going to get stuck in, in some foolishness and you'll be just find that foolishness, right? It will not be the crisis that will kill you. It will be your foolishness that will kill you. That is the beauty of having a plan. But you must always know that the best of plan will never mirror reality. So you have to take your plan and be ready to make adjustments, right? When you face reality, you know, but I'm already getting ahead of myself. But the key thing here is that we plan for the sake of execution, not for the sake of planning itself. So when you have done your best planning, it's time to execute. But when you go to execute, know that you'll be ready to make adjustments, right? And so, and that's what you, the Roosevelt tells us, right? He says, in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing you can do is the wrong thing. But the worst thing you can do is do nothing. Right. You need to execute. You never know until you execute. You never learn until you execute. Right. So, um, so, and like I said, that just goes to the second reason why plans fail, right? The second reason why plans fail is people don't execute. People die in planning. <laughs> they don't execute. They're scared. They're, they're, oh, I will lose money. Oh, yeah, everybody has lost money. <laughs> you learn. You lose money, you learn. You don't lose money, you don't learn. Yeah, what you lose is, is what you pay for your education. You get better, right? So the first reason people don't succeed is they don't show up. They don't execute, right? They don't make the attempt. They don't start, right? And that's why 80% of people fail. They fail because they don't even start. <laughs> they don't even make the attempt. They plan, plan, plan. They are scared. And you are, their life is no better, right? 80 to 90% of people are poor just for the reason they don't make the attempt, they are scared. They say there's a lion on the, in the street, so they are not going to go out, right? But they rather beg those that are going out, right? You are, you're only going to die once, you know? You're not going to die twice, right? So and you're not going to live here alive. You're going to die one day. You have to take the risk, you know? So uh, that's that's the second reason why people don't people feel, right? That's good. So we'll go on to the third reason why people fail here. All right. So we're going here to the third reason why people, why, why uh, plans fail, right? And the third reason why plans fail is that people take more than they can handle, right? So uh, we we'll said the first reason is ignorance. The second reason is people will not even try. The third reason is that people, when they even try, sometimes they, they bite more than they can handle for different reasons why they do that. One is because they just want to, oh, I have delayed all these years. I've not been invested. They now say that you have to uh, invest. You have to plan. Oh, they say, oh, let me rush into it. Let me just do everything at the same time. They say you must plan. So you plan, you, you will succeed. Oh, you finish it before you start. Though because I've now finished it in my head, I just go and just uh, embrace everything. I mean, that's stupid. You know, never bite more than you can handle if it fails. Right. Don't forget, <laughs> you always see that time print investors or, or, or uh, asset managers will tell you it don't, yesterday's success does not guarantee tomorrow's success, right? Because you have to learn your own lesson, right? You have to learn your own lesson, right? Also, you never step into the same river twice, right? What made someone succeed yesterday? It probably didn't tell you the whole story. It gave you a summary. The whole story, you probably find out when you go to the field yourself. So never put in into your plan what will take you out of, out of the market if you lose it. You need to learn the lessons. You need to prove your plan. Don't forget again, the best of plan will never mirror reality. You need to learn reality yourself when you start executing, right? None of us have been to 2023 before. But there's also nothing special about 2023. It's just going to be like every other year, right? But it will be like the river. You can never step into the same river twice. Waters have moved. You have election. You have different things taking place, right? The whole principles still hold true. 
yourself hold true. The environment has changed. God is the same. You are the same. You probably grown tall. The environment has changed. That environment does not stay the same. It's like the river. The water has moved. You need to then test and understand the new realities of the, of the environment and see how your plan will best fit into the new realities of a plan, right? So that's why you don't bite too much at the time. You bite enough that you can control, you can make adjustments, you can learn from and still be in, in, in the business, right? So that's what Jim Collins will, will tell you. Jim Collins uh, wrote two popular books. They're also smaller books for me, but Jim Collins and his partner wrote the book, uh, Good to Great, uh, Built to Last, you know, where they looked at different companies and they come up with that, that most companies fail because they just, oh, they've succeeded in one small thing, they now go and bite more than they can handle and they fail, right? So as you do your plan also, uh, don't be too much in a hurry. Learn, learn, learn the market, learn the environment and only increase to the extent to which you can handle, right? Uh, so, um, so you have to prove the opportunities yourself. You have to, to learn yourself, right? What the market looks like. 